first question is what is indicator diagram of simple steam engine second question please solve problems for the indicator diagram of steam engine by using the formulas let us understand indicator diagram of simple steam engine it is the graphical representation of variation in the pressure and volume of a steam inside the cylinder or simply we can say pressure volume diagram now we will understand how to draw pressure volume diagram with clearance and without clearance with the help of this diagram now this diagram is the arrangement of the piston and cylinder here is the inlet port from where the steam enters inside the cylinder and here is the exhaust port from where the steam is exhausted from the cylinder now if we observe initially the piston is at outer dead center and then when steam enters inside the cylinder then it reaches to the inner dead center now what is the clearance volume it is the volume of space in between the piston and cylinder cover when the piston is at inner dead center now the length in between this inner dead center and outer dead center is known as the stroke length now we have to draw the pressure volume diagram with clearance and without clearance that is whenever there is the clearance volume then we have to keep some space when for this volume when the steam enters inside the cylinder now when steam enters inside the cylinder it enters inside the cylinder during the process 1 to 2 that means when we have to draw this um, pressure volume diagram we have to place the point 1 on this vertical line without clearance because there is no need to keep some space so here is the point 1 but whenever there is the clearance volume then we have to keep some space so i will select some space and i will plot here the point 1 now we will draw the pressure volume diagram with the help of the different processes so what is the process 1 to 2 so during the process 1 to 2 steam enters in cylinder through inlet port that means inlet port is getting open and steam enters piston moves so what is happening as the steam is entered inside the cylinder then the piston is moving in the from this odc to idc so i will show here the movement of piston so here is the direction so as the piston is moving that means what is happening pressure will remain constant so the piston moves so steam enters at constant pressure and at point 2 steam supply cut off so point 2 is known as the cut off point so i will show here the process 1 to 2 so without clearance we have to show here the constant pressure and here steam supply cut off so here is the point 2 i will show arrow also now here also we will show process 1 to 2 so at point 2 steam supply cut off so here is the arrow now we will move for the next so next process process 2 to 3 so process 2 to 3 is the expansion process that is the expansion is taking place so what is happening in the expansion process so we know that pressure is getting decreased and we know as the pressure is getting decreased volume is getting increased so we have to show this process so piston reaches the dead end so during this process piston reaches to the inner dead center and this expansion follows the law that is the hyperbolic expansion pv is equal to constant that is pressure multiplied by volume is equal to constant so we have to show here So here is the point three, and here is the point three. So we have to show the law that is P V is equal to C, and here also P V is equal to C. That is P V is equal to constant. Now we will move for the next process. Process three to four. So at the process three to four, or during the process three to four, exhaust port opens, and steam releases so here 
It is processed three to four when the piston is at inner dead center, exhaust port opens and steam releases. So pressure decreases suddenly at constant volume. So as the exhaust port opens, pressure is getting decreased, but the volume remains constant. So we have to show that process. And the point three is known as the release point because at point three steam releases. So we will show here the decrease in pressure but constant volume. So here is the point 4. So here also we have to show that process. So here is the point 4. Now we will move for the next process that is the process 4 to 5. So during the process 4 to 5 that is the return journey of the piston that is it will return from this inner dead center to the outer dead center so i will show this return journey with the help of the direction so here is the direction so the return journey of the piston starts and use the steam exhausted at constant pressure so from the exhaust port the steam is getting exhausted but the pressure will remain constant so we have to show that process so here Pressure remains constant that we have to draw here the straight horizontal line and here is the point 5 and here also we have to show the point 5. So this process 4 to 5 is getting completed now the next process is 5 to 1. Now this point 4 is known as the back pressure. Then process 5 to 1. So what is happening during the process 5 to 1? Inlet port opens and steam suddenly enters. So this is the suddenly enters the steam. So what is happening? Whenever the steam enters suddenly, its pressure is getting increased but the volume remains constant. So we have to show increase in pressure at constant volume that is 5 to 1. And here also we have to show we have to keep here some space so here is the point 5 and we have to show here the point 5 so here is point 5 to 1 so in this way this diagram is getting completed now we will show the pressures and volume in this diagram now at point 1 and point 2 constant pressure is there so p1 is equal to p2 we will say here the pressure p1 now point 4 is known as the back pressure. So this back pressure that means PB. But we know that uh, pressure at point 4 and 5 will be, that is same. P4 is equal to P5 and which is equal to back pressure that means PB. So I will say here as a PB. Now this point 2 is known as the cut off point. So I will extend this point 2. And the volume I will show up from the starting point to the point 2 that is V2. So we have to show here V2. Then I will extend this point 3. So volume at point 3 is equal to volume at point 4. So I will show this as a V3. So total volume is V3. Now we will move for the with clearance diagram. So at the starting we know that here is the clearance volume. That is whenever steam enters inside the cylinder we have to keep some space for volume and that volume is known as the clearance volume. So we have to show here. Clearance volume. Then I will extend this point to That is, this volume is known as V2. Then, I will extend this point 3. So, volume at point 3 is equal to volume at point 4. And this is known as V3. So, this is V2, this is V3. Now, if we observe after the clearance space, there is the distance in between this point 5 and point 4 that is the swept volume and we have to show this with Vs. So I will show here this volume is known as Vs. 
Let us understand some important formulas with the help of indicator diagram. Mean effective pressure. So its a notation is P to the base M and which is equal to work done per cycle divided by stroke volume. Now if we observe the diagram without clearance and with clearance then we have to take work done that is nothing but area under the curve 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. So in the same way here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. Now theoretical or hypothetical mean effective pressure without clearance. So here without clearance and with clearance both diagrams are different. So what is the formula that we have to take without clearance that is PM is equal to P1 by R. So P1 is shown that is the pressure at point 1 which is equal to pressure at point 2 divided by R in the bracket 1 plus 2.3 log R bracket complete minus PB. So PB is equal to that is the back pressure that is at point 4. Now what is this R? So R is the expansion ratio and it is the ratio of V3 by V2. So if we observe here is the volume V3. So V3 divided by V2 that is the expansion ratio that is equal to R. We have to take. Now we will move for the theoretical or hypothetical mean effective pressure for with clearance diagram. So here is the diagram for with clearance. So PM is equal to P1C. So here is the pressure P1. P1 C plus 2.3 P1 B plus C log of B plus 1 divided by B plus C minus PP. And here is the pressure PP. Now what is this B and what is this C? So this B and C is nothing but the ratio. So B is equal to it is the ratio of VC by VS that is the ratio of clearance volume divided by swept volume or it is also known as stroke volume. So here is the volume Vc and here is the volume Vs. That is equal to B. And what is C? So C is V2 minus Vc. So here is the volume V2 minus Vc divided by Vs. So from this diagram we can understand here is the volume V2 minus Vc divided by we have to take stroke volume Vs. Now we will understand the diagram factor K which is equal to area of actual indicator diagram divided by area of theoretical indicator diagram. Now how to show the area of the indicator diagram that is the actual work done per stroke and divided by theoretical work done per stroke. Now if we observe what is the Definition for the mean effective pressure. Then mean effective pressure that is equal to work done by swept volume. So if we observe actual work done per stroke that is nothing but the mean effective pressure. So we can put here instead of the work done per stroke we will put here actual mean effective pressure divided by theoretical mean effective pressure. So what is the formula for the diagram factor K? Therefore K is equal to Actual mean effective pressure notation is PA divided by theoretical mean effective pressure notation is PM. Now I will read the first question. A steam engine cylinder receives steam at a pressure of 11.5 bar and cutoff takes place at half of the stroke. Find the theoretical mean effective pressure if the back pressure of steam is 0 0.15 bar. Neglect clearance. Let us understand the given data. Steam enters at a pressure. So steam enters at a pressure that is P1. So P1 is equal to 11.5 bar. Now here it is given that cutoff is equal to half stroke. Now if we observe question is for the mean effective pressure without clearance. So we have to refer the diagram for the without clearance. So if we refer the without clearance diagram then what is the meaning cut off is equal to half multiplied by stroke. So point 2 is known as the cut off point. So if we observe the volume at point 2 that is nothing but V2. So I will write V2 is equal to half that is 0 0.5 multiplied by stroke. So what is the stroke volume or swept volume? 
So stroke volume that is the volume from this initial point to the final point. So if we observe this V3 that is equal to V4 that is nothing but the stroke volume. So we can say that from this diagram stroke volume that is V3. So we will get V2 is equal to 0 0.5 V3 from the given data. Then back pressure 0 0.15 bar. So back pressure point is the point 4 and this is the back pressure PB. So PB is equal to 0 0.15 bar. Now, if we have to find out this mean effective pressure, then we have to find out the value of R. So, R is nothing but the expansion ratio and that is V3 by V2. So, V3 by V2, how to find out? So, if we observe from this given data, V3 by V2 is equal to 1 divided by 0 0.5. That is equal to 2. So, R is equal to 2. Now, we have to apply the formula. So, Pm is equal to P1 by R, that is 11.5 by 2, in the bracket 1 plus 2.3 log of 2 minus Pb, that is 0 0.15. Now, we will solve this, we will get the answer 9.58 bar. Now, I will read second question. The cylinder of non-condensing steam engine is supplied with a steam at a pressure of 12 bar. The clearance volume is 1 by 10 of stroke volume and the cutoff takes place at 0 0.25 of the stroke. The back pressure is 1.1 bar. Find the mean effective pressure of steam on the piston assume hyperbolic expansion. Let us first understand the given data. Steam supply pressure. So it is given 12 bar. So this is the question for the with clearance that is we have to find out the mean effective pressure with clearance. So we will refer this diagram. So steam supply pressure that is the pressure at point 1. So I will say P1 is equal to 12 bar. Then the clearance volume is equal to 1 by 10 stroke volume. Now if we observe this diagram here is the clearance volume Vc. So we can say that Vc is equal to 1 by 10 stroke volume that is Vs. That is Vc is equal to 1 by 10 Vs. Then cut off is equal to 0 0.25 stroke. Now what is the cut off volume? So volume at point 2 if we observe that is the we have to take here or refer here the clearance volume. So volume in between this point 1 and point 2 is known as the cut off volume. So this cut off volume is 0 0.25 times the stroke volume. So stroke volume is nothing but Vs. So how we can write here the cut off. So volume in between this point 1 and point 2 that is V2 minus Vc. So I will write here V2 minus Vc is equal to 0 0.25 times stroke volume that is Vs. Then back pressure 1.1 bar. So back pressure is at 0.4 that is nothing but Pb. So Pb is equal to 1.1 bar. Now when we have to find out the mean effective pressure with clearance, we have to find out the value of B and C. So what is B? B is nothing but Vc by Vs. So Vc by Vs if we observe, if I take Vs to the left hand side then Vc by Vs is equal to 1 by 10. And that is equal to 0 0.1. Now C is equal to V2 minus Vc by Vs. Now if we observe this given data then V2 minus Vc. And if I transfer this Vs to the left hand side then which is equal to 0 0.25. So I will write here as a 0 0.25. Now we will refer the formula. So Pm is equal to P1C. So P1 is given 12 multiplied by C that is 0 0.25 plus P1. That is 2.3 multiplied by P1. That is 2.3 multiplied by 12 in the bracket B plus C. That is 0 0.1 plus 0 0.25 log of B plus 1. That is 0 0.1 plus 1 divided by B plus C. 0 0.1 plus 0 0.25 minus PB. That is minus 1.1. Now if we solve this we will get the answer 6.7 bar.